So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, we have y equals negative 2 ln of x plus 3. The first thing I want to do is look at my function to identify the transformations, right? And you can just work left and right. And the main important thing is we want to identify, is my value c, that value that I'm using, which c represents any number, am I applying that transformation inside or outside the function? So just even reading this from left to right without eating yogurt, I can see that the first thing I'm doing is multiplying my function by a negative, right? Now is that negative inside my function or outside my function? Outside. So guess what? I'm just going to write reflect x axis. That's one transformation. Now I look at the next thing. I'm multiplying my, oh, actually, sorry. First of all, let's look at what is the parent function. I know I took it down. It should be up like the other ones. But the parent function here is ln of x. That's the parent function. So now I have a 2. Am I multiplying that 2 outside or inside the function? Outside. And 2 is larger than 1, so therefore it's a vertical stretch. OK? Then I keep on moving over. I see that now x plus 3, um, I'm adding a 3. And I notice that I'm adding the 3 inside the parentheses. So therefore, that's a horizontal transformation. But since, x, um, since I'm adding the 3, that's the same thing as minusing the negative. So therefore, it's shifting it to the left. So I have three transformations that are going on. Would everybody agree with me? Yes? OK. Now to graph this, you guys have notes on what the ln function looks like. You have notes on what the ln function looks like. It crosses at 0, 1, and it looks something like that. Please note there's also a horizontal asymptote. OK? Oh, what the heck am I doing? Sorry, yes, that is e to the x. Thank you for checking your notes. Ln of x looks like this. Crosses at 1, looks like that, has a vertical asymptote. Thank you. Right? And you don't have to prefer. I'm just asking you to sketching the graph. We're not looking for perfection here. Yes? Why do you multiply this by negative 5? Because the absolute value, I'm multiplying a number outside the function. Right? The absolute value of that number that I'm multiplying is greater than 1. So it's a vertical stretch. OK? So now, yes? Again, it's, I'm not going to be getting particular. The main important thing is you can identify it. As far as the graphing portion, I'm going to show you on graphing calculator what it looks like. But I'm not going to expect you, like, I'm not going to mark you down saying your stretch is not good enough. Okay? It's more, more importantly that you can identify a stretch, what it looked like. Um, but for instance, like on a parabola, you should be, for instance, you should be f familiar with the stretch. Like the stretch makes it basically skinnier and like stretching it up, right? So the logarithms and x, um, logarithms kind of get a little bit trickier because they still kind of follow along that same path. Um, but that's exactly what's happening. So, um, so anyways, we're going to, so we got to reflect the x-axis. So you guys can see now my graph is being reflected of the x-axis, correct? I have a vertical stretch, so I'm kind of stretching it out. Um, and then I'm going three units to the left. So I'm going to do the three units to the left first. So if I go three units to the left, one, two, three. So my x-intercept, instead of it being at 1, 0, is now at negative 2, 0. And my asymptote, which was at 0, is now right here. So my graph would look something like that. Yes? Why is it negative? Oh, OK. Now, 